everyone, I'm Spencer. I'm Laura, and we're Married with Board Games. In this review, we'll be taking a look at yet another area control game. There's something that sets this one apart from others, however, and that's its theme. In Roar, King of the Pride, three to six players compete to be the dominant lion pride in Africa. Sounds pretty cool, right? Let's head over to the table for a quick overview, and then we'll tell you how well we think this cool theme is executed. Welcome to Africa. Uh, so this is everything uh, that you'll be using in Roar. I'm gonna do this wide angle so you can see everything, and then I'll zoom in on the individual components and show you what they're used for. First of all, here's the board. You're gonna be sending out your prides of lions to try to control as many areas of Africa as you can. That's gonna be the main way you get points. So at the end of the game, you've got several different ways you're gonna get points. You have whoever has the most lions on the board, whoever has the most lionesses on the board, whoever produces the most food, and whoever controls the most territories. And then you get points based on you know how you rank in each of those categories, and whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. Now this is a pre-production copy of the game, so it's not the final version. So when you see the final version in the store, it's going to look a little bit different than this. Um, as you can see over here, this says two-player, and the game doesn't even play two players anymore. Um, but as far as how the game plays, what it looks like is with the R's and all that, you can expect that that those instances will be the same. At the beginning of the game. Everyone will, will either, you know, you can pretty much pick which, which pride you want to take. Um, but you can see that they all have a name, and then it tells you where they begin. So, like the Barbary Lion uh, starts over here. Any of these red territories, you can place your starting lions. Um, but each of them will have a special ability. They can um, start, they'll start the game with two ancestral strength. And then the starting regions are here, which again are also marked in red on the board. Here are the different a actions you can take on your turn. And then over here has a round sequence, which again has changed since this production. So it's a little bit different. But you've got the different colors. You've got the Barbary Lions, the Senegal Lion. They start in West Africa. Katanga Lion, Congo Lion, Maasai Lion, and the Tran Transvaal Lion. Um, pardon my pronunciation if it's incorrect. Each lion comes with their supply of lion meeples. So you've got a male lion. Let me get that focus. So you've got the, ooh, there we go, a male lion meeple. And then you've got the female lion meeple. And so they're pretty distinguishable when they're on the board. And so when you start the game, you'll place a particular number out on the board in those starting territories like I mentioned. You'll also get a number of these mission cards. Um, you're going to at least keep one at the beginning of the game, but these are secret missions that uh, are going to give you a way to score extra points at the end of the game. For example, this says enter the territory of Mozambique. Now, these are instant, so as soon as you complete one of these missions, you reveal it, and hey, that's two points at the end of the game. However, if you don't complete these, it's going to cost you two points at the end of the game. Um, so you got to be careful about which ones you keep, which ones are, are attainable. Like this one, it says own the least adult males. Well, that's not really a good thing in this game, but if you do own the, the least amount, then uh, at, at any given time, you can reveal this and get three points. First thing I want to do is walk you through uh, the things you can do when it's your turn. You can gain more mission cards, so you'll draw two, and you can look at them, keep as many as you want, and then discard them. Another action you can do is movement. You can move your lions and lionesses up to two territories, so and it could be any of them, as many as you want. So you can move these two this way, you can move these two this way, whatever. Um, but, but yeah, as many as your lions as you want uh, can move up to two spaces. If your pride is smaller than an adjacent pride, then you can sneak through a territory. So for example, this little female over here by herself, since her this pride is smaller than this one, could sneak through into Chad. If there's a human token on the board, you can sneak through there, but you have to lose a lion um, if you do that. Another action is breeding. If you have a male and a female on a territory, you can attempt to breed. What you'll do is, what you'll do is, you'll roll the die, and it will tell you how many lion cubs you're going to breed. You will then draw the according amount of these tokens, which on one side will show the gender, and uh, that remains secret until a different part of the game. But you'll put that back in that territory 
where you bred. So now I've got this pride here with a little baby lion. Here's the interesting thing, there is a pride size limit. So in each territory you can never have more than two males or seven females. However, babies don't count against that rule. If you were to roll this plus, then you get a bonus token, which you can spend at any point to do one extra of any of your actions. Another action you can do is roar. If your pride strength is greater than adjacent pride, your male lion can roar and essentially convert a female. So what you'll do is, let's say that this, this pride is stronger than this pride. So this male roars and this female leaves and now becomes a red lion. And finally, you can attack. If your pride size is stronger than an adjacent pride, you can attack and they have to move to an adjacent territory, leaving any babies behind. Let's go over real quick how a round of the game works. First of all, you will pass the first player token to the right. Then you'll age any lions that are on the board. So if you've got a baby cub, it'll flip over and you'll see what the gender is. If you already have ones that are flipped over with the gender revealed, you'll convert those to adults. Next is human activity. Whoever's the first player will place one of these human hut meeples on a space on the board. Initially, you can only place them on territories that has a food value of six, and then from then on, you can place them on adjacent territories. Once you've placed all of the, meep the human meeples on the board uh, for your particular player count, so in the case of a three-player game, you need to put down nine of these through the rounds. Once all nine are on the board, then you'll start taking them off the board and place, this, place them on this game end area here. So you'll remove, and then here, and then each round you'll keep doing that, and then placing them. And then once it gets to the appropriate player count, the game will be over. Again, these aren't final, um, but you get the idea. The next phase in a round is Ancestral Strength. You can choose if you want to, to remove a male lion from the board. And that's kind of redundant, isn't it? A male lion. Uh, and place them here, right there. What that does is it increases the Ancestral Strength of each of your males whenever it comes to attacking or roaring. So now, all of my males are going to have a value of two as opposed to the initial one. The next phase of the game is player actions. So each player will take two actions of the ones I previously mentioned. And after that is starvation. So you have to look to see if your lions have enough to eat. The way you do that is you calculate the number of food your lions produce based on what areas you control the number on those areas. For example, this is a five. So for the female that's there, males don't count for this. So you have to have a female in an area for you to be able to produce that much food. So if the male was here, I wouldn't produce six because he's not a female. Um, so in this case, purple, I've got a female here, female here. So that would be, I produce 10. 10 food for my purple lions. You have to feed your adult lions. Male lions eat two, females eat one. So I produce 10 and I need one, two, three, four, five, six. Good, I'm able to feed all my lions for the purple tribe. However, I don't think that the red tribe does. So here in Libya, I produce three, in Chad, I produce three, and in Egypt, I don't produce any because that's a male. So really, I only produce six, and yet I have to feed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Do not come close to feeding those lions. And so for each one I can't feed, I have to remove from the board. You do start with a certain number of these food tokens, depending on what your line is, and so you can spend these, uh, but there is no way to ever get those back once you spend them, and if you have some left over at the end of the game, they do count towards the amount of food production uh, when it comes to scoring that particular one. So that's a basic overview of Roar. Again, the game is over after a certain number of rounds based on your players, and then you'll calculate your scores in each of the categories of lions, lionesses, food production, territories, and then, of course, your, your secret missions that you've completed or failed, and whoever has the most points wins. Roar! Roar! You know, Roar. my favorite thing about this game is that the person that goes first is the person who has the most oppressive roar. Really? Yes, it, but it's, it's so charming. I mean, it's, it's charming, it's, but, I mean, that's subject to opinion. Well, okay. And then we've never actually gotten to do it because we always play it after our children have gone to bed <laughs> and we don't want to wake them up. I just like the doing roars. the clever thing, but anyway. Yeah. Uh, all I that understand. to say, let's begin, shall we, with some wonderful artwork on this game. Yes. Oh my goodness. 
it's, killer job. It's wow. very well done. Um, just the, the execution of the way that the different lines look. Um, the graphic design of the board, of all the cards. Um, everything's got a really nice clean look. Mm -hmm. um, very easy to read. And um, I think they did a, a wonderful job just on the visual presentation of the board, the art, um, all of that. Definitely, uh, I agree with that. Great to look at. And again, this is this is not a final copy, um, so we're maybe not looking at the final version. But as far as from what we can see from this version, um, it's going to be good mm -hmm. for sure for for a final final version. Uh, I especially like the lion meeples. Yeah, those are really cool. They are. I've awesome. never seen lion meeples before, and I don't. Thing. I've never had an issue differentiating between the females and males. What about you? Right. Yeah. I mean, sometimes if my, if I'm at one in, if like I'm in the north mm -hmm. part of the board and I've got lions way down in the southern tip and I'm trying to count up for when feeding time yeah. to make sure I've got the right amount. Sometimes I do have to like turn them profile. Yeah. Just to make sure that I'm counting them correctly. But they're they're pretty, on the surface, pretty easy to differentiate right. for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, all that on the, the visual aspect of the game. Let's get into the how the game plays. Yeah. I feel like that this has got some pretty straightforward area control concepts. Yes. What about you? I agree. You want to have, you know, the most in, in here. You There are different ways to add um, force onto the board per se. Um, you've got some upkeep to keep those on the board. Um, so as far as like area control, if you're familiar with a lot of those, this game is gonna feel pretty familiar um, in how it plays. What I like about it is that it's very thematic in its mm -hmm. area control. Okay, yeah. I mean, I think everything that you do in this game has a thematic tie. Yes. Um, it's not just here, put some more lions on the board. No, you've got to breed. You got to breed. Mm -hmm. You can roar and steal a female from an opposing yeah. uh, pride. You can attack with your ancestral strength, yeah. and, <laughs> and, and your and, and your babies yeah. will age mm -hmm. or mature. And I mean, I think that's just wonderful how it, and even with the human interaction, right, and how that drives them out. That's, I mean, really cool. Yeah. So I I, I really appreciate, it and I feel like that. You know, with the different with the different tribes of the lions, with their special abilities and how that's executed, um, I feel like this is a really very well researched game. Yes, definitely. They they, um, they did their homework on this one, and and all the concepts of everything you do in this game has a thematic tie, which we always always appreciate. Yes. Um, so with this being a pretty straightforward area control, although with thematic ties. How do you feel? Do you feel this is difficult to learn? Well, no, because I think because of it being uh, so tied into its theme, I mm. mean, it all makes sense. Yeah. And so there isn't anything difficult to understand about that at all, I feel like. I mean, it, it just makes sense no, to and, do it that way. And everyone we've taught it to catches on real quick. Yes. Um, it's just, there's, like you said, it makes sense. It's got a nice flow to it as far as, and especially because the first like four parts of the round you're kind of doing all together, right? Mm -hmm. So you can really instruct each person as you go through those steps. All right, here's where we pass the first player marker. Here's where we add humans. So if you're gonna be adding humans, here are your options. So really, I mean, you could get into this game and just play. You, know, you can give some general overview on it, but you can just jump right in and kind of teach as you play that first round. That's right. I think people will catch on real quick. Yes, most definitely. So like I said, it's, it's got a nice flow through the rounds. Mm -hmm. um, step by step by step. I like that, um, you know, when you get to your actions, you've got a list of things to do, um, but it, it sometimes it's, it's, it makes sense what you should do, right? Definitely. I don't feel like there's ever an instance where it's like, oh man, I just, what do I do? Mm -hmm. do you well, it, that does happen <laughs> if you get trapped okay. by humans. Yeah, that if is true. If you keep your prides too close together, mm -hmm. instead of letting them spread out, um, those the human camps if you're certain tribes of lions because there are some tribes that can sneak through right um where humans are or there's only one that can do that um but the others can get trapped and then you're stuck there mm -hmm. um so yeah um i know i agree with you and it it's you do have a little bit to consider though because you have to plan ahead for the feeding mm -hmm. so you got to make sure you got all those out on the board Mm -hmm. um, you've got, you know, you need to grow your, your size. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, I'll give you that. I will say though, I think one of the main 
things that would help contribute to that, making sure you don't keep your pride all clumped together, is getting the cards. One of the actions、mm, that you can、mm-hmm. do is get a card. Yeah.、Um, it's kind of like a mission、mm-hmm. card. Yeah, secret、um, objective. Right.、Um, which is, well, usually, most of the time, they're directing you to move to other regions.、Mm-hmm. Um, and that helps with keeping everything spread out because, I mean, they're so, the cards are so random that,、mm-hmm. I mean, you need some up here. In the north, and then some way down in southern western、yeah. um, Africa. And, and so, those kinds of things are very important. I think the cards are incredibly important and can make a huge difference. You're right. I hadn't even thought of、scoring. it. I hadn't even thought of it that way. And using them, them being a, a tool to spread out your, your, your pride. That's really neat. I never、mm-hmm. thought about that. But it is, you know, you've got kind of a personal, is it like you can, you can explore different strategies with this too. Yes. Like,、um, If you want to keep your, your, your prides close together and just build them up, or if you want to try to split, spread your influence over more,、um, I think there's a lot to explore every time you play. Right, because that's something else is、um, it,、um, having control over a ton of different regions. You、yeah. know? Like, there's a lot of stuff when it comes to the end game scoring、yeah. to consider in your gameplay. Yeah, for sure.、Um, so, let's talk about the length. Okay. So, there's, you know, you've got the, when you start the game, depending on how many players you have, is, is how many.、Uh, Human huts you're going to put out. Right. And then for the end game, it's, you know, how many you're going to remove and put down on that track.、Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think about for a three player game? I think that it's too long. Okay. We didn't understand why. Well, yeah. With that, it went, the three player game has the most rounds. It's, it's 15 rounds. Whereas and, four and two player games and, are and, not that many. And as I, many. Right. And I don't feel like, and, Obviously, it depends on who you're playing with, but I don't feel like in those last two, three rounds, really anything changed in the state of the game. Right. That's exactly what I was about to say was I think we could have been fine with 12 rounds. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. You, Because it is, I mean, they're quick rounds.、Mm-hmm. It, you have two actions. Yes. Every, t- every round. So, as far I mean, as. So, they, they go quick. The player actions, I mean, there's just those two、mm-hmm. to choose、uh, or two to execute.、Um, I mean, so it's not like they take long, but if you have too many of the、mm-hmm. rounds, that's when it can kind of go, okay, I'm ready for this to be done. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like that, especially for a three player, they could have cut down a couple of the rounds. But I mean,、I've, it was enjoyable、mm-hmm. as we played it. Well, maybe there's just something we don't understand from the design aspects. Right. And, you know, that I, led them to do that. It could balance out, you know, with, so if you're playing with six players and you're playing with fewer rounds, sure, you have less rounds. But you've got more people to go through when it comes to those player interaction or those player actions. So maybe it all balances out in time and it all evens up the same.、Um, but we'll see. Yeah.、Um, so let's talk about randomness in this game. Yes. You have some randomness to this yes, game, like a, I just said. There is a die to、yeah. roll when it comes to determining if, when you breed,、mm-hmm. um, if and how many, if or how many cubs get added to the board. And, and what gender? The, well, that, the dice doesn't tell you what gender. Well, yeah.、Mm-hmm. Then you randomly draw the tiny little、mm-hmm. that is. And <laughs> on the other side is the gender that's face down. So you don't even know what you're getting, which, I mean, that's what happens in real life. So、right. I think it's very thematic it's, it's, that it's, way. It's thematic, but to, I can see how to some it could be frustrating because if you really need a male, either for your ancestral strength, Or for when you're attacking, or for to continue breeding, obviously. Yes, yeah, you can't just have those two males if that you start with. If you're continually drawing females, it can be very frustrating. It's very thematic. Yes. But if you want to be st- very strategic, you got to keep that in mind that there is that, that randomness. That, well,、um, there's a possibility you might, when you select breeding as your. Action, you might not get anything. Right, you might draw that. Which is what happened. I, you get the plus sign, which means you get、yeah. a bonus token.、Mm-hmm. Which, so, no babies with that one. No. So just know that, that there is that element of randomness that you just can't control, either if you're going to be able to add forces to the board or if that's going to be what you need.、Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk about meanness in the game.、Yeah. Um, not only can you be mean to your opponent, But you can be mean to the lions、uh-huh. by adding that human、um, touch. You can essentially kill baby lions. Right. So if you're adding a human hut、mm-hmm. to a region where there are lions in it,、mm-hmm. uh, those lions have to disperse.、Mm-hmm. But the little baby tokens, the cub tokens, cannot move.、Um, if it's 
that they're moving due to being attacked by other lions, those cubs just stay there, right? No, they they're though, though they're gone too. Yeah, anytime the that they're left, that they, they're left, and another another they die because there's no one there to take care of them. Another force comes into so if if you leave yours and I come into your area, they're gone. Mm-hmm. And then if you add the humans, they're gone. Yeah. And so if you think about it too hard, it's really sad. It is extremely sad. <laughs> uh, but <sighs> if you also, you can, it's... It's a game. It is a game. Yeah. And you got to do what you got to do to win. Yeah. So, again, keep that in mind if you don't like that element of... That's something, like, I mean, that might be an issue with family game. Playing this with a family. Yeah, maybe. That might be a bit of an issue. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there is that to consider. And finally... Everyone we've played it though has really enjoyed it. Yeah, everyone, everyone we've played, played it played with. with. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, and so so there's definitely a very enjoyable game here, and and I think that a lot of people are going to like this game, especially for its its uniqueness and its theme. Yes, and um, the look of it, and of course the awesome lion meeples. <laughs> yeah. Do you have anything else to add? No. All right. Well, the bottom line for Roar for us is for an area control game with a unique theme and a little bit of randomness. We recommend you check out Roar. There are some really neat things going on in Roar. We enjoy the unique theme, which is extremely well researched and executed. We also enjoy the artwork, graphic design, and really cool lion meeples. We do feel the game goes on a little bit too long for a three-player game, and it is important to note that if you don't like randomness in your area control games, it does play a pretty big part in this one when it comes to adding new lions to the board. But all around, this is a solid area control game that we think many people will enjoy. And so we give Roar King of the Pride a rating of 7.5 and a seal of approval. Again, major props here to the designers for the research and execution of theme. We're going to box this one up for now. If you'd like to do research on us, check out our website for reviews, blogs, and our podcast, marriedwithbg.com. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.